Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zercher and today I'm going to be demonstrating the first few steps of the otter needle roll. I decided that I would tape what I do after I've downloaded the instructions, the templates, and the color pattern and show you how I go about getting everything organized and ready to go. I just want to thank all of you for such a tremendous, overwhelming support of this product and of my design. It actually took me by surprise and I just really, really appreciate the flood of messages and kind words from so many of you, which is just so heartwarming. I just so appreciate it. it means everything to me. So let's go ahead and, and get started. I'm going to be doing the needle roll now with the left-handed pattern because I already did it for the right-handed. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, click on that bell for email notifications. Talk to me. I love hearing from you, as you know. I do really love hearing all the comments and reading what everyone has to say. It's, it's really lovely. Don't forget to check out the description section where I'll add links for any of the things that I'm using in this video, as well as lots of other things that you might want to look at. So let's get started. When I turned this into a PDF, it made it into three pieces of paper instead of two, which is unfortunate, but I couldn't figure out how to shift it. So there it is, and I'm going to cut these out. And then I have my templates, which I'm also going to show you how I do these templates. Others may have different ways, but I'll show you what I do. And then I have my instruction booklet, which the first one, for those of you who immediately ordered this on Etsy, the hot links, as you know, weren't working. So I've redone it. The hot links do work now. And so when you have it on your computer, they should all take you to the correct videos. I went ahead and printed mine out just because I like to have the hard copy in front of me. It makes it easier. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out my otter here along the black line, which I'm then going to tape to the other page. And I'll do the same with the third page. Just as a point of reference, as you can see, this one's labeled Otter Needle Roll Left-Handed Color Pattern. The right-handed, it will say right-handed, and so then you'll know. Okay, so there I have it. I've taped my sections together, and I can go ahead and just use my measuring tape here just to make sure that my printer isn't skewing anything. And so now I'm going to take my templates here, and what you'll see is that you get two extra pages that are are not necessary and it's just one of the quirks of doing this on EQ8 as opposed to something like doing it in in design or illustrator which is a whole other thing that I should probably learn to do but I haven't and I know how to use my EQ8 program and so it's easy for me to do it in any case EQ8 one of the things that it does is that it prints out the entire project instead of just having the blocks it's also printing out a page that is if you tape it together will be exactly 16 inches by 7 inches, which I don't need that because I already have the templates for the sky as well as the ocean floor, and I'm putting just ignore those two pages. If that's confusing, I'm sorry. I don't know how to do this differently with EQ8. And now I'm going to get my heavy duty freezer paper. I use this, I just really like it. It comes with 25 sheets. I've put a link, there's a hyperlink in your instructions. I'm going to just take the number that I need, which is, I believe, five, and I'm gonna put this right into my printer. You're gonna notice a little mark here. This little mark, ignore it. This is the nose. It may be that it's the eye or the mouth, and we're going to create that with stitching. So you just need to ignore that. And I'm going to cut out each of these shapes. For the ferns, for instance, which I'm cutting one of them out, these fronds, I'm actually going to add a little bit to the bottom so that I have something to tuck under that null. So on all the ferns, I'm going to add a little, maybe a quarter of an inch. I'm also going to do that for his paw 
which is right here, so that his body will overlap his paw. All right, so I came across one thing, and I remember this when I was designing it. I couldn't get rid of this little lump here. What I do is I just round it. It's just a nice little curve. So just things like that, just kind of go with it. All right, remember I said you should add a quarter of an inch to the head here? And then I forgot, so here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to write add quarter inch with an arrow so that I remember when I iron this down to add it to the wool. You're gonna see that little jag here. I'm gonna smooth it out. So I've got all my pieces here. I'm going to cut for my needle side one piece of sky blue wool, 16 and a half by seven and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So it might help if I mark sky, guy, ocean, ocean, and this is where I meet. And then I have to remember that I'm adding a quarter of an inch all the way around both of these pieces. When I piece my sky together for my wool, one side that's less modeled than the other, and I'm going to take the one that's more modeled just because I like that. I'm then going to fit this here, and I'll gently just give it a little press just so it's adhered, and I'm going to add a quarter of an inch all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and eyeball this. If I give it a little more, that's fine. I don't want to give it too little. And then I'm just going to press that under like that, and I'm going to give it a little press here with my iron. This is actually the only part that really does matter because if I mess this up, then my needle roll is going to be the incorrect size. And I, so I, I want to be sure that I get this right. This is hard, card stock. I mean, it's really thick, this freezer paper. So if it were just regular freezer paper, I could just literally tap it, hold it for a couple seconds, and that would adhere it. But because this is a card stock, it it does take a little bit more ironing. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm doing a generous quarter. It's really a quarter plus a little, and the same over here, because I just want to be sure that I'm giving myself enough room. I can always true this up, and I will after I've finished stitching, so I'd rather give myself a little room here than not. I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to give myself a generous quarter of an inch, and I'm going to do the same here. So I know that this is about what I want and I'm just gonna eyeball it and I'm just gonna follow this and there I have it. This is my ocean and here's my ocean fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this on my ironing board. I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to go ahead and pin these two sides together and I'm gonna stitch giving myself a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, I've marked them. This one's one and a quarter. This is five eighths, and this is seven eighths of an inch. I have amended the instructions to show seven eighths, one and a quarter, and five eighths, but just so you know, I did not follow my own design, and I actually just did four one-inch circles, three for the front and one for the back. I find it easier to just mark where my quarter inch is gonna go. If you're left-handed, it's going to be, this is your little null here, and if you're right-handed, it's gonna be on the opposite side, and it's gonna be here. I use this, it's a textural turquoise. I tried to find it on Sue's site, I can't. I think anything that you can find that is a little bit darker than this one will be just fine. So here we go, quarter of an inch. So I'm just following my template and I can take this off or I can leave it on, you know, if, if you like to leave it on, if you prefer leaving it on so it can remind you of what you're doing and what it is, do that. I'm not gonna even bother truing this up. I'll just leave it alone. I can true it up later. So here I have my needle label shapes, which I forgot to include. I've now amended the, the book it has these as an attachment on the side and so you should be able to see that when you download. I'm only allowed to download five PDF files and so I had to add the labels themselves into the instruction booklet and then I added these as an attachment. So this is my one inch circle that I'm cutting out and I've got my star. Also, just so you know, the wools that I have in the instructions are all the wools that you can easily get from Sue Spargo, but they're not necessarily the wools that I ended up using because I'm using stuff that I have in my stash. So 
if you see that the colors are a little bit different, they're generally gonna be the same, but they might be a little different. And that's the reason I tried to get as close as I could to what I had. So I am gonna go ahead and cut out this star because the other star is actually quite a bit smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this larger one. I don't have any more of my orange uh, wool, so I'm gonna have to use a different color wool for, for mine. You know, like I said, I'm just kind of using what I got and it is not exactly the same. Again, these are these things that I don't worry too much about. If it's close enough, it's going to be fine, especially when you consider that you're covering it in these stitches. It will make it look very similar. So if you don't have the exact colors that I write in the instructions, and that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and use these for my frog. Okay, so this I did not have enough, but the wave is going to cover it so I'm not going to worry about it and I managed to get just enough on this little piece of wool that I have and you know that's the kind of thing that you just you just do okay so here are my shapes for my needle side and then I've got my all my shapes here for my otter side and what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to sew the wool to the sky. I'm going to take all of these freezer paper off and I'll start working on the first layer, which is going to be this dark frond and this light frond. I'm going to put those down first and then I'll go from there. That'll be next time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this uh, was maybe helpful. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, click on that bell for email notifications, and I can't wait to keep going with all of you as we make the needle roll together.